Parents have read it. What is something your child has said to you that actually hurt your feelings? I don't remember saying this, but when I was about 18, I offhandedly mentioned to my dad that I didn't recall ever hearing him sing. His response was well, when you were in preschool, I was singing you to sleep, and you sat up, and told me to go get mommy, because she can actually sing. I'll let her do it after that. I still haven't heard more than an occasional hum from him, slash. I had a blood pressure spike and my wife had to drive me, and our two kids, to the ER. Uh. My 6 year old son said on the way out the door well, if dad dies, it's okay, we've still got mom. Of course he doesn't understand death or emergency rooms, but I bet Santa is going to be much better to his big sister come Christmas. I'm the child. When I was around 4 years old, my mom and her sister decided to take their kids, me and 4 years old cousin, to the fair. We were running towards a fair ride, and it had a sign saying no pregnant woman permitted. I turned to cousin and said, they won't let my mom on the ride, they're going to think she's pregnant. My mom was right behind and I could see on her face how much that hurt. Later at home she cried and cried for hours. Many years later, when I was 16 my mom and I were in a huge argument. My mom was yelling at me for the usual teen stuff, bad grades, dirty room, etc. She kept saying, when I was your age, my mom never had to tell me to clean my room slash study slash etc. I was getting tired of the comparison so, when she said, when I was your age, Again I interrupted her, and yelled why, do you try to compare yourself to me, like I should aspire to be like you? You were pregnant, and not even in school at my age, I don't want to be anything like you. I knew immediately I'd fucked up bad. She was so stunned she just stared at me with this hurt, look on her face, and then quietly walked to her room. I was so angry, that I didn't care at first, but two hours later I walked by her room, and saw she was still crying. And finally my stupid teenage brain allowed itself to feel sympathy and regret. I apologized to her and we hugged, but damn man. I think about it every once in a while, and feel sad and regretful all over again. Luckily I doubt my mom even thinks about it anymore, and we are best friends now. I treat her like a queen these days, mostly to make up for all the times I treated her like dirt. My mom and sister were fighting one time and my sister brought up the fact that my mom dropped out of high school, she didn't have a very good upbringing, and had to start working as a teenager to support herself. I remember her referring to my mom as Mrs. 9th grade education, and my 16 year old sister telling her, God even I have more education than you. I swear I could feel my mom's hurt through the air. She didn't say to me, but I overheard her talking to her friends about me. She and her friends were having a sleepover, and they were talking about dieting. I was at the door eavesdropping so already I was in the wrong. Anyway, my daughter tells her friends, diets don't work. My mom is always on one of those things, and she's still fat. Her friends fell out laughing. I was so stunned, and hurt by it, that I just slithered away. In shame. I'm the kid. Son specifically, and I fucked up. I love my dad with all my heart, but he and I don't always communicate well. We just aren't on a good wavelength. My brother however, doesn't even attempt to communicate with my parents. My parents love my brother and I, more than my brother and I will probably ever understand. Anyways, my brother is not the ideal son by many, and certainly my parents standards. They don't love him any less, and still try their hardest to be in his life, to shower him with love, and even his two daughters. But he shuts them out. It all sort of started with my brother just resenting my parents for some reason. He also just had a bad self image and this has led him down the wrong path many times. It's always made my family sad to see him slip up, because he just doesn't value himself like he should. So I guess long story aside, my dad and I were in a car together talking and well. I didn't mean to but at some point I said I thought my dad being harsh on my brother as a kid was what made him turn out the way he did. He didn't cry on the spot. But what happened was much worse and more soul crushing. My mom called me later when I went back to college. She told me he was up all night and the night following. He had been crying for days straight, blaming himself for his son that he loved so much. He was racked with guilt and shame. I've never felt so bad. I love you dad, I really didn't mean it that way. It wasn't ever even close to your fault. You can't blame yourself, and I hope you don't. 
I'm sorry, and your oldest son is getting better now as well as his daughters. I'll never forget feeling like the worst scum in the universe. It's somehow worse knowing my dad forgives me, because I know it's only a sign of how greatly he loves me and my older brother. Not me, but I was there. Daughter's dad and I are no longer together. We all got together for lunch. She was 3 at the time. She told him she didn't want him to be there. He asked why. She said, because I don't love you. Witnessed heartbreak on an epic level. My stepson, who I have raised since he was 1, told a friend he was going to change his last name, which we had legally changed to my last name, when he was 7, that he was going to change his name back to his deadbeat dad's when he turned 18. It was the worst gut punch when I found out. He is 21 now and never went through with it, but even thinking about it now makes me queasy. My daughter was my foster kid at age 16. She was a very hurt teenager and said a lot mean things to my husband and I. She was a recovering drug addict and during the withdrawal she told us I rather be used and I in the streets than live here for one more minute. Sucker punch us in the gut. We tried giving her a good home and help her recover, but it was so hard for all of us. And now she is clean and sober at age 20 completed high school on time and got a full scholarship ride to a fancy university. She clings to us and calls us father and dad. We are a family that never gives up on each other. I was probably the kid. I was watching the Maury Povich show with my mom and the episode featured morbidly obese people. One lady came on stitch and I said to my mom wow, she's almost as big as you. It took me years to realize why she seemed offended. You know, I used to have kinda sorta stepdaughters. Things were great for a while and then they saw things get more serious when I moved in with their dad and I guess reality hit them. I wasn't the one that yelled at them or made them do anything and I even had a terrible sex life because they slept in the bed with my was fiance. But I honestly didn't mind too much, you know? Like I used to sleep next to my father too, and I remembered the security within that. Anyway, I rarely kissed the man, held his hand, and he became extremely distant and cold because of alcohol issues. And as he got bad, the girls got bad as well. I felt like I was completely isolated and alone. I remember one day, their father told them be nice to your stepmom. And one of them yelled she's not our stepmom. She's not any kind of mom. I wish you never even met her, and you went back with our real mom. I hate her. I went outside to cry, and one of them found me, and ended up feeling bad. I told her that I knew she was just upset, and that it was okay. Sometimes hurt people say hurtful things, love. I even found a notebook with me drawn in it that said I hate you, and you're ugly, and you should die. Like I understand they weren't even 10 years old, but man that really really hurt. Especially since it seemed we had a strong solid relationship and it slowly somehow came apart. I was there for their birthdays, Christmas. We would go to the parks together and talk all day long. They would tell me their secrets, their fears, and talk about their lives with me. They used to tell me they were happy I was in their lives. I still don't understand what went wrong. I really tried my best to be the cool stepmom. I think the moment they saw me standing next to their father, holding his hand at a party, they snapped. Their mom was in prison for a meth lab. They got a couple calls from her here and there, and seemed really happy to talk to her. At one point, they even ran across the house with the cell phone saying daddy, talk to mommy. But, why? Because daddy, you need to talk to her. Since me and my ex broke up a long time ago, they seem to slowly come back. Since I'm the mother of their younger sister and the last time I saw them, we literally just hugged each other for a very long time and wept. I miss them, but step parenting is really hard. Not just hard on me, but hard on those kids too I think. And I don't know if I can go back to that relationship, because I realize just how bad it hurt to be rejected by kids you really love and care about. I think they were just hurt and missed their mom. I really wanted to be a mom figure, but I don't know if I was strong enough to handle what was thrown at me, especially since my ex was no emotional support at all. I really did become jealous of their biological mom, because I wanted to be accepted so bad. I wanted them to see me as that person. I realized I was never going to be that kind of person though, even if I tried my best. I spent a lot of time alone in our garage, hugging one of the girl's teddy bear, and crying into him. 
He was all I had that felt like home. I was really broken in that time period of my life. I was 23 when I had my oldest, who is now 13. I have a 2 year diploma, make 60k a year, but I absolutely love my job. My son said to me the other week, mom, if you didn't have me, would you be successful? Although it wasn't intended to be hurtful, I have to say, that was the most hurtful thing I've ever heard in my life. I told my great aunt, when I was 7 years old, that she has nobody in life except God. I didn't understand what I had said. I had heard the line which was similar from a movie my family had watched months prior, where the quote was for those who have no one. They always have God she passed away a few years later. She was alone, when she died and no one seemed to give a shit. It still bothers me to this day as it was the last thing I said to her, before she passed away. I'm an epic douche. I hope her soul has found peace and forgives me. My son is black and Latino. He's adopted and my wife and I are white. One day I was helping him with a self-portrait he had to complete for homework. He picked the peach colored crayon, and I asked him why he was using that color. He said, because sometimes I wish I was white. It hurt to hear that. I wondered if my wife and I were to blame for him feeling that way. I felt like we didn't do enough to make sure he was comfortable in his own skin. He's 12 now, and is very secure and confident, sometimes too confident, but it still hurts when I think back to that moment. If there's anything my kids have taught me, it's that anything I take personally must be true. I'm human too, and if they hit me too close to the skin, I'll feel it. A week ago, I heard my son say, mom is lazy, isn't she? It hurt because he was right. I was massively hungover, and it was 11am. I had just lectured them the night before about respecting their bedtime. I'm an adopted child, from Russia, by a French mother. When she was angry at me for something I didn't make properly, or the chores not done, or something else, I told her she could join the customer service and try to make the warranty work as I was not working as intended. Now that I'm 22, I feel so bad for telling this her. Colon open bracket. It's a good idea to detach yourself a little bit so this doesn't happen. Not so much that you become oblivious and insensitive, obviously, but they are children. Brand new, uneducated people, self-centered and emotionally driven, impulsive. On that note, I put my son in time out for some out of control behavior. My mom burst into the room and started yelling at me threatening to call the police. And in the midst of the argument my son told me he didn't love me. The rage I felt towards my mother was basically keeping the door open wide enough to let that comment in. It was a spicy moment. For reasons I cannot possibly fathom, my dad really liked to tell the story of when he stopped beating me. He was hitting me, and I looked at him, and said you hurt me, and it was like I had need him in the groin. He would say. From that day forward he stopped spanking me, and instead talked out the transgressions. Thing is I remember the last time he beat me. I remember getting thrown through the doorway into the house. I remember several fists landing across my body. Then I remember waking up hours later with bruises across my entire body. I also remember him still hitting me after this tale of love he enjoyed telling. My nephew said this. As a fat guy, I ate a lot when I was a kid and it really lowered my self esteem. I begin to notice how much my nephew was eating. Even my brother, his dad, said he could finish a whole pizza by himself. He's 5y. Oh. That really worried me. One day he had a family sized Dorito bag, and was just eating it himself. I told him to give me the bag, because he was going to become big. He then said well you're fat too, and that sh asterisk he hurt. I'm just trying to look out for him, and don't want him to walk in the same path as me. I'm still pretty fat though. My boy's not even two. So at this point he has no idea. Boo it. He had woken up and was talking to himself in the room next door. I usually leave him alone while he is happy. He started getting a bit noisy and when called mommy or daddy I went in to get him. I opened the door morning champ. Little bugger saw me, dropped his head to his chest and started crying. Apparently he wanted mommy. I might have laughed it off. But that has been filed away in the wait till you are a little bit older you little shit basket. I was around 7. Our country was in plane crisis, my dad's job had just closed, and he was desperately looking for a job. Worth to mention, I used to see him for 2 hours a day, because he worked into jobs, 
so he saw the bright side to the situation and spent a lot of time with me. One day I was looking some cool and expensive 2006 stuff with him, and I said why can't we afford that? And he said something like we are going through hard times since I don't have a job, and why aren't you looking for one? It fucks me up, if I had a time machine I would go to that moment and punch that greedy, shitty, asshole mathurfucker out of my 7 yomi. I sometimes remember this when he's near and just hug him. I'm not a parent, but an aunt. I'm also a disabled vet diagnosed with arthritis in my knees and ankles. The summer I learned about my knees having it, my niece made fun of me for having trouble getting up after sitting on the floor. Worse still, my sister high fived the little monster. Well, I don't have any kids. But I remember when my mom had this happy looking peasant top. She was really happy with how she looked in it, and I think I was jealous, or maybe I just wanted to kill her happiness, I dunno. I told her you shouldn't wear that at your age, it's too young looking. She felt so bad, and I think she actually gave the shirt away to a younger relative. God I was a shithead. I'm so glad we are still talking. I was number 5 of 7 kids. So I was going to be an invested parent. I wasn't a helicopter, but I was attentive. I didn't want him to feel ignored or unloved like I did. Coming back from a shopping trip, he was 4 years old. He disobeyed me, so I told him only 2 books before bed, not 3. He replied, no, he yelled, fine then. I'm not your friend anymore. I was 38 years old and almost cried. I yelled back at him, you take that back. Don't you ever say you're not my friend. Yeah, I know. Hard to tell who the parent was. He turned 20 in June and I can't tell you what I'd give to turn back the clock and hold that sweet little caramel baby again.